tell me a little bit about the most daring thing you've ever done. The most daring? What a question. Mm. Well, this is what I do uh, every day. I don't... I, I, uh, I don't know if I have something that I, I want to pinpoint as most daring. Mm -hmm. But simply what I do is I, uh, I dream by night and in the morning I go and implement my dreams. So one of the very first things that I did in life after I uh, uh, finished my uh, PhD at MIT, that I went and implemented what I have been basically dreaming of, uh, of doing there, which is building the first uh, information and decision support center for a government in the world. And instead of building one, I built 1,500. And after st instead of being engaged in one project, I went and implemented 900 projects. These projects are basically um, range from reducing the debt, help reducing the debt of the country from $44 billion to $29 billion, to digitization of legislations of the country, which you go back to 1824, to digitizing government, all the ministries, all the governorates, cities, provinces, to the digitizing even the museums, and to build a new generation that talks um, information technology, that talks uh, information society, and, and getting the internet to, to, to Egypt was another dream. And uh, as a byproduct, we got I got it to 14 countries in the Middle East and uh, to the I led Africa Information Society Initiative, which you got internet to Africa. When you think about all this portfolio of projects as examples, um, you find that uh, each one of them had a daring dream that next day, if you believe in it, you go and implement it. So what is your secret? to daring, do you, do you ever have a thought before starting a doubt? How do you get rid of doubt? I just believe, and I love, and I give. So you never have any doubts? I mean, I don't have doubts, uh, as long as we know. Uh, and if we don't know, we need to go and learn, and come back and apply what we learn. How many times have you failed? What's your most spectacular failure? My spectacular failure is understanding life itself. Everybody thinks that I understand it the most. But I really, the more I live, the less I understand. I mean, we understand a bit, but we learn every day. And if you take life for granted, that means that you're finished. The most um, the dimension that I underlined and I didn't like lifetime is the political dimension and how much it has an impact, particularly in the developing world, um, on the technocratic approaches. I mean, I always believed that, that if you have, if you know, and, and I believe in the accelerating economic and social development in a country, and if you are sincere, and if you are daring, and if you do the best of it you can, there is always a room. And you will deliver, I mean, this would contribute. However, the one underlying dimension that uh, I know pragmatically, I understand, I deal with it, but you need to have a self-destruction from inside the political system or inside your own people. Uh, that's, uh, that's something I didn't take into account. And how do you manage that or allow for it? You learn and you make sure that you don't repeat it again. Okay? You need to handle politics as part of a given part of life, like you're handling organization, like a human being, like a marketing operation. It's an existing part of life that we have to think about, you have to deal with it, and you have to make sure that you don't get influenced with it so that the focus of 
And so <coughs> how do you bring people along and get them to see your vision? Because a part of the thing of being a visionary very, is you're seeing something and you're at the top of the very, hill and there's someone in a trench and they think it's very, right. Very simple how do you do it? rule. Uh, repeating the dream, repeating the dream, repeating the dream until those in front of you, they realize that and you start repeating it. It's in simple world, building organizational and institutional culture by believers, not by workers. And do you, before you set something out, you have a vision, do you, do you work with your most skeptical person first or do you get the people who are most likely to follow your dreams? I work, I work with the right person who's, based, in my opinion, uh, who can be ready to share a dream mm -hmm. and join a journey and hard worker enough to get it done. And then do the dreams become catching and contagious? It's contagious and they become, I mean, they assume the ownership of the dreams and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always, always, huh? So you're like retired. the dream dust man. <laughs> okay. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, what I find, I mean, after working for things, I will not give you example. I, I have many examples, but after finishing the thing, everybody assumed that it is his, which has given me a pride, mm. uh, a lot of pride. I mean, once I had a dream about building a valley of civilization in Egypt, which is basically a Smithsonian like set of museums. And the idea I got it in Ottawa, Canada. I'll tell you about it why I was, visit I was visiting the Museum of Civilization there as part of a Privy Council visit um, that I was, was prepared for me there. And I basically reflected about our own civilization and how this can be brought to the world. And biased to and, uh, to, and impressed by the Smithsonian's huh? institutes and the museums in Washington, I said, well, how about the value of civilization, where one go from a museum to another? To make a look, long story short, it took me about 12 years and to, to get it from idea to implementation, but it was modified politically on the way, and what is now currently the Great Egyptian Museum being implemented now the largest museum in the world. And how many governments have been in power since then? Since when you be, for began it and when it finished? Well, more the, it has not finished, it is being implemented. More than a dozen governments, but it's being built. So each time and a new government comes in, so, you have to get so them to the, buy the So the, only, the, the, early, the early group are the ones who know how much, it took me 12 years, mm -hmm. out of passion, I did, without any pay, mm -hmm. just love, believe huh? and marching the people. Now it's everybody and what's important is that you're going to leave it for humanity. It's going to be behind. Same with building the information infrastructure of a country. I mean everybody say that I'm the godfather or the grandfather of the information age in my parts of the world. And I remember the first project and the first center I built. But today Less is less, I mean, is being, I mean, it's what's focus is on, on what has been, what's been there today. When people started the, the, uh, the emergence of the, uh, uh, of the Arab Spring, people talked about the internet and who got the internet to, 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 to this part of the world and how, and everybody was just referring to, to, to my name. Huh? I mean, on one, on the one hand, um, uh, my, my mega dream is to accelerate economic and social development. My underlying theme is peacefully. So I am the guy who believes in building up on the, on the generations, uh, on, the, uh, on, on mobilizing the nation's best resources mm -hmm. the and the most young people as well as with the limited resources to make sure that they can accelerate in terms of Development of education, development of health, development of jobs, development. I mean, I'm a believer in all of, all of this. So I feel happy, proud when information is put to use, when knowledge is put to use. And I feel very disappointed when someone destroys something that has been built. Huh? Because, of the, again, we don't have much in that part of the world. So are you ever heartbroken by something you absolutely love? And it Every day. Because how I am do you a lover. Deal with heartbreak? <laughs> I'm. I mean, I'm always in love. I mean, I'm. So how do you deal with heartbreak? 
How do I deal with heartbreak? Yes. It's patience. Yeah. <laughs> it's lots of pain inside. Yeah. I mean, you didn't. I, I, I mean, you want to go and ask me about how much? I mean, how much is this heartbreak? It's, how much uh, is your heartbreak? <laughs> it's probably more than anybody on earth. But <laughs> We've the been next doing day, so many things. but the next next day, always I have a belief and I have lots of love for those who can take it. So that gets you past your your. Is it by having a lot of things happening at once that allows you not to be too attached to each one? It's one because I believe. I believe in people, mm -hmm. I believe in nations, I believe in cultures, and I believe in a better world. Second, because I appreciate, understand the importance of knowledge and the limits to this knowledge. Okay, and the importance of the continuous learning process. So I'm always in a quest of uh, knowing mm -hmm. or getting the best people who knows that thing about. Third, in the application of such knowledge and for something meaningful and helpful to people so that we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. We are in a journey. We start, we finish. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we can do is to leave something behind that makes a difference. And hopefully, if it's in our lifetime, to enjoy it as well. Are you born an entrepreneur or can you be made one? Who said I'm an entrepreneur? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, were you born an entrepreneur or were you made an entrepreneur? I'm born like this. I, I got two compliments yesterday. Phone calls. Um, and one of them about the TV interview, about two hours um, this evening interview that took place. And the second I finished, someone called me, haven't called me for a long time, Hisham, you never change. 30 years and you have the same passion. And the second call, which was about 10 hours apart, same thing said, okay. I remember you saying the same thing. So I know a limited few things that I believe in. Yeah. Uh, and so I keep believing in keep it. Keep to your knitting, stick to your knitting. Uh -huh. what, what fuels your passion? What's your source of inspiration? Do you believe in our higher? Naturally, I'm a believer in God. <laughs> Does that fuel you? I, it fills me a lot. Yes. And uh, I'm afraid of God. I'm not perfect. I am not perfect. But I try, before I go to bed, to have a clear conscience, to make sure that I've done good. And if I did something wrong, I feel so bad, like a kid. I feel ashamed, I feel so bad. Second thing, that I believe in people. And this is good and bad. Because those who are worth it, huh, they can make life, whether it's business or, it, I mean, heaven. Others, which you learn by life, I mean, you need to, de to deal with them. Third, I am a believer, underlined ten times, that we can make our world better, i.e. I'm a believer in economic and social development and I'm much more believer, and this is my speciality, in accelerating development. Giving me any status, I'll tell you how can we leapfrog. There are three scenarios, there are four scenarios, and this is the way that I think we can leapfrog. If you believe together with me about the way, so let's do it. And so, this, uh, I'm a board like this. Fifth, I'm a believer in inclusion. That this world is so beautiful, so rich, but we make it poor. And whatever we need to be richer, we can as well make other people happier. Um, I don't believe in the word have-nots. Okay, I want people, the have-nots, to be empowered by education, by knowledge, by proper health, by, 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 and they go and join hands in hand uh, to go and build this world with rules, uh, with responsibility, with competitiveness, uh, and let the best uh, be first, but, the, but there will be second and third. Not only a world for few, but a world for all of us. I'm a believer in that. I mean, I get so distorted and distracted and uh, destroyed uh, by seeing poverty and by seeing uh, an uncared, handicapped, disabled, 
and by seeing illiteracy, uh, by, and by seeing people who are um, um, tr treated unjustly because of uh, poor political decision making and poor decision making. Uh, this is a shame. Uh, in 21st century, it's a shame to see people dying in Africa, to see people not cared for for medical care, uh, f to see people with illiteracy rate as high as in my own country and my own region, 30% or 40%, that's a shame. And uh, to see people with such level of poverty and poverty line, uh, this is uh, disgusting. So when are you going to get into politics? I'm not. Really? Well, people see that I, I should have. Okay. Mm. But uh, don't you think that time passed? Why? Frankly speaking, <laughs> uh, I know the importance of politics. Mm. But I think I had the same question about a couple of months ago from someone who shooted in the eyes like, like you. <laughs> and uh, I told him, there are people who are concerned about the politics mm -hmm. and there are people who are concerned about their countries. Mm. I'm more concerned about my country yes. and make sure that it is on the right track. And I think you can keep a clean vision because in politics you have to compromise. Yeah. You need so, to keep the clean vision and, and bring think, them with I you think, rather than I think this is, be this, part of it. And then this has always too been, many obstacles. This has always been the problem. Yeah. Everyone knows that I cannot work for, I, but I work for my country. Mm. I serve my country. So I'm there to serve Egypt, to serve the Arab world, to serve the developing world, free of charge, lifetime. Okay, irrespective of who's in, cha on, in charge and which government is there. Uh, and frankly speaking, uh, what I care about is the nation. So how do you, if you're doing everything from serving, how do you run your businesses then? How do you know which is... Which is what's not charity? Which is my serving? Which is my business? There is Chinese wall. I'm a totally different person in a business. Again, people say that I have a heart, big heart. Uh, for example, every single person who basically who worked for me since I was, I mean, in 101 in business, is medically insured, is in fully insured. So that, I mean, it's, it's. Uh, I do business with a lot of social responsibility but not backwards forwards I make people happy team family so that we can do business okay and in business we make money and we lose money and particularly in that part of the world where is with where is by definition imperfect markets imperfect information imperfect politics infamous I mean we pay the price of being in that part and being building in that part which is harder than making money on the developed world because you know the rules. Huh? And unfortunately, with someone like me who follows the rules, he pays the price. Okay? Because I don't accept but, but by following um, the right path. I hope. Okay. What would be three tips you'd give someone leaving school right now? What would you say to them? Believe in your dream. Go and implement it. And put a lot of love to everything around you. You'll be among the top richest people in the world.